Here he was, in silent fascination as the cat screamed and leaped against the wall. Would he notice the new wallpaper in the dim light? Suddenly, the policeman turned to me. Yes, I... I guess that noise is only the wind. Strange, I like a wailing woman it can sound, isn't it? Yes. Well, I'll be leaving now. I guess it'll be all right for you to stay here. I'll make a report at headquarters about your wife. It's very good of you, Kiri. If she turns up, you let us know? Yes, I... I'll let you know. Good night, Mr. O'Neill. Good night. He left. I locked the door and came back to the room. The room where my wife was entombed. Was she still alive inside the hollow of that wall? I listened all that night. The wailing rose to a high, insane shriek. And then, towards morning, began to grow weaker. And so she was losing strength. And it, it seemed to die. The cat crept away. There was a merciful silence in the house. She was dead. She had to be by now. I sank down onto the sofa into a feverish sleep. Somewhere a bell was tolling, calling the mourners to the grave. Suddenly I sat both upright, shaking, trembling. Oh, I'd been dreaming. The front doorbell was ringing. It was night again. How long had I slept? The house was silent. Oh, there was nothing to fear now. I ran to the door, opened it. Hiya, kiddo. D- Dorothy. Well, are you going to keep me out here in the cold? No, no. Come in. Come in. I, I haven't been... I haven't been feeling well, Dorothy. Is that why you forgot our date tonight? I, I must have overslept. What time is it? Ten o'clock. Ten? I must have slept clear through the day. Well? Aren't you glad to see me? Glad? Why, yes. It's a, it's a delightful surprise. Well, that's more like you. Come here, kiddo. You've got the blues, but Doris here wiped them away. Give us a kiss. Mm-hmm. What's that? Just. Just the wind. Oh, no, it can't be the wind. This is a very old house, Dorothy. You sometimes hear strange noises. Oh, I've never heard anything like that before. Sounds human. Oh, she's still alive. Even after 24 hours, suddenly I realized that the doorbell was ringing again. There was a large pair of wooden sliding panel doors between the room that we were in and the vestibule that led to the street. I wasn't going to take any more chances. There's someone at the door, Gabe. Yes. You wait here, Dorothy. What are you doing? Closing these doors. Why? I'd advise you not to ask too many questions. Evening, Mr. O'Neill. Officer Clear here. Who are those men with you? Hey. Got something to show you, Mr. O'Neill. You'd better brace yourself. It's not going to be pleasant. All right, bring it in, boys. You can put it over there. What? What is it? It's a... body. A woman. Just fished out of the river right near here. She can't be dead more than 24 hours. My wife? That's hard to say. You see, the body got caught in the propeller of a boat. It's not easy to recognize it. Unless it was examined by someone who knew her very well. Like yourself, of course. Uh, let me see it. Take away the burner. Look, Miss Dunham. <gasps> I know. It's pretty bad. Is... Is it your wife? Agnes? Yes. Yes, of course, it's... It's her. You're sure now? Yes, I, I'm sure. Positive. All right, boys. Take it away. You can stay here, Mr. Arnett. I'll take care of everything down at headquarters. Good night. Good night, Cleary. Luck, fate, 
whatever it is that seemed to control men's lives was playing directly into my hands. They'd never investigate now. The nightmare was over. This time I was really free. Suddenly, the panel door opened. Dorothy was standing there. A curious smile on her lips. I heard everything, kiddo. You did? So you were married. No longer, Dorothy. My wife died. Suicide. So I heard. No, everything will be quite all right and we can get married in a few weeks. We'll have money, lots of money. You left you plenty, eh? She was very wealthy. What's the matter? Nothing. <laughs> 